All right, you beautiful humans. I get asked about this quite a bit. So for those of you that are new around here, and of course, not forgetting the familiar friends that have been here for a while, I did want to create this for you as more of a blanket answer to some of your questions when it comes to the 14 inch M1 Max, specifically the M1 Max MacBook Pro with the 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. But really, this is just more of a chat and personal experience. So there's, of course, your disclaimer. And I really kind of want to focus on the confusing nature because let's start off with this form factor, specifically what Apple has done here to try and bring us what we have been asking for for quite a while, while of course confusing us at the same time. And I'm just grateful that this thing wasn't about being thinner and lighter. Now, of course, for context, I just want to remind those of you that hang around those forums about all of the discussions that took place over the years about the 14 inch form factor and how this should be the new standard taking the place of apparently the tired and just dated 13 inch footprint. And I had been following this rumor for quite some time, and I don't think that we could have ever expected Apple to basically offer us pretty much the same internals, the IO on the 14 inch and 16 inch, except for the obvious difference in screen real estate and some throttling that has been discovered through benchmark testing on the 14 inch M1 Max. But really what I think is occurring here is that would we have more delineation as far as our buying decision if it was just the Pro in the 14 inch and you could get the Pro or the Max in the 16 inch? And with very little time to think, including myself, when pre-orders went live right after the announcement, it was it really was on because many of us had already anticipated shipping delays if we had waited to build out a couple of options, think about it, which a little extra time to marinate is what I, I prefer, but I needed to execute on my order. And I literally did that in just under two minutes, not realizing that after the fact that what we had noticed that there was really just a 200 US dollar price difference between the 14 inch and 16 inch models, regardless of how you spec it out. And really who doesn't want more for their dollar? And this razor thin difference, in my opinion, is what added gasoline to an already fired up consumer base on these new machines. And I've of course said to those of you who asked that if you are able to see these two side by side in the store, you will likely lean toward the 16 inch. But as much as these latest machines fixed many of the issues that many of us had with the previous devices, the award still goes to the M1 chip that started to get many of you excited again about what Apple was doing. And this architecture isn't new, I get it. But the reduced instruction set that occurs translating to that efficiency and where I think has the most potential for growth here. But let me also be clear that I am both aware and excited to see what the likes of Intel, AMD, and Nvidia are releasing this year. And I think it's more exciting. It really is a more exciting time for the consumer at this point. And I bring this up because I've been in those pitch meetings over the years where I've had businesses say, we want to do it like Apple, but with our spin on it. And folks, nothing says losing market share like completely abandoning your roots and your own strengths. And I'm not referring to the lack of exploring new architecture because this should always occur, but being like Apple is never a great marketing plan. However, the marketing banter and comparisons between these companies, it's just something that exists. And what I'm an advocate for though, is the tools that give you the opportunity to work the way that you wanna work and give you back time and choice on how you spend that time. And it seems that Apple, when it comes to their marketing, <laughs> their marketing is dominating because no matter what you're doing, you're apparently enjoying the hell out of these devices. But at 3299 US for this particular spec, there is an enormous amount of pressure to enjoy this device along with a term that I really don't throw around lightly because in the end, I think regret is just succumbing to consuming poison. But this is a tool that should check the boxes of not just the dopamine hit, but does it actually serve you? And I think those of you that have already decided that you wanted to replace your current 16 inch 747 or even your 15 inch MacBook Pro, it was pretty much decided as far as the 16 inch footprint, but there was, and I believe still is this question about if you're thinking about the M1 Max, that this is a mistake in the 14 inch chassis, especially the 32 core GPU. So let's start with the sacrifices in battery life, because in my testing of the M1 Max, where I've used it for video editing, I had said that with Final Cut Pro or even DaVinci Resolve that four hours, maybe five, is what you can expect with some of these heavier tasks. Whereas when using it for browsing, doing some camera research, streaming on Spotify, 
watching some videos and answering emails, I can use this all day in low power mode without any sacrifice in performance. And I actually even tested it in low power mode, trying to edit with it. I didn't have any issues with the performance and I have that video and I can link that up. I mean, heck, I used it unplugged all day yesterday. And granted, I do step away from the machine. I do take breaks, I eat, etc. But I ended up plugging it in at about 8 p.m. But I didn't even need to because I was still sitting at about 30% left after having been on battery since earlier that morning. And let's talk about the thermal throttling. And in this particular spec, it does exist on this device, but I can't replicate it outside of synthetic benchmarks in my own workflow. This machine is beyond what I can do with it. And that's really just my truth. I rarely, if at all, get the fans to spin up, except maybe during certain effects that I apply or during some exports. And in fact, I have some gear on the way and some projects that are coming in that I am more than able to grow into this machine, but I could still manage it with a 13 inch MacBook Air and definitely with the Mac mini that offers thermal headroom for days. However, having twice the video encoding on the M1 Max versus the Pro is worth it to me. And I hope to see more of this being taken advantage of as optimization does continue with the full Apple Silicon integration deadline that is supposed to occur later this year. And this isn't just about export times because I can walk away while this is occurring, but being able to work with a variety of codecs and not have the machine break much of a sweat when adding effects, color grading, it is definitely a time savings and I pay for time. So that leads me deeper into the why of this ecosystem. And I'll admit I am swimming just fine in these waters and I can without hesitation say that if I were more reliant on Premiere Pro or other relevant software that I just needed it to work and not slow me down, then you would find me elsewhere. I know that Blender has some exciting results in their alpha releases for Apple Silicon, and I will continue to test that here for you. But as a sidestep on the choice of a MacBook Pro over a Windows laptop, especially what we may see coming this year, I really want to get to the point where I can start testing these machines on this channel, which is a goal of mine because I don't think Windows is really a turd anymore. And it is a heck of a lot more enjoyable than it used to be, although there are some interesting times when it decides that it wants to update. But my point is, is that even on the x86 architecture, I truly want to see how other machines will compete with this 14 inch when it comes to the power draw and what it's actually delivering. But right now we just have a bunch of pitch decks and marketing speak, and we'll just have to get these in hand, but I am rooting for the consumer here. And of course, I don't want to digress here too much because this is about choosing the 14 inch over the 16 or vice versa. If you're truly using this as a laptop and doing work where that extra screen real estate does make it a priority, or if you're someone that just needs a bigger display because you're getting, let's say, wiser, then of course it might make sense to consider it. But of course, if this is more of a desktop replacement or a device where you may find yourself connecting it to an external display, then the screen of the 14 may not be that much of an issue if you're using it more as a secondary, although you would have a larger secondary display with the 16 inch. And quite frankly, who wants to keep that retina burning goodness in clamshell mode anyway? And of course, I am an advocate for the smaller footprint when on the move and I do travel uh, quite a bit. And it's not as if the 16 inch is anywhere near that 17 inch that Apple used to offer. I mean, does anybody remember those? But maybe you already have a sleeve or a bag that fits the 14 inch better. Maybe space is limited. And as much as I continue to advocate for the MacBook Air for that battery life as being a primary benefit, maybe this is or isn't much of an issue for you. But again, for those with the M1 Max, it does seem like landing with the 24 core GPU might be the better blend of performance and power sip. Although I will say that part of me is still holding out that there is still going to be a more defined or delineation with the 32 core GPU as software is able to take advantage of those resources as long as the thermals will allow. But I do have a harder time making that recommendation as of today with only marginal differences, but we know how that goes when waiting on the operating system or software to catch up to the specs. And I'm looking at you, M1 iPad Pro. But let's wrap it all together here. And as far as the value is concerned, we first have to look at the premium that we're all paying for that portable form factor. And that goes for any portable device. So that's gonna be the wash here either way. But if the built-in screen real estate, especially if you're not connecting to an external display very often when it comes to editing, or that extra battery life as a priority, especially with the M1 Max, 
then we're leaning toward the 16 because for travel, that's still up in the air, but sometimes it's enough to make that decision for some of you because at the, the 14 inch coming in at three and a half pounds or 1.6 kilograms or 4.8 pounds or 2.2 kilograms on the 16, I mean, that could make or break your situation. It just depends on how streamlined you need your kit to be. And of course, those beautiful graphs and all of those numbers that I and other creators are throwing at you are there because we're benchmarking these machines, trying to make the fan spin up, trying to drain the batteries, pushing the CPU and GPU, and really just performing tasks on these machines that many in a day-to-day -day scenario may not even come close to taking advantage of. Although from what I've seen in the development community, you all are really pushing these devices and I like to see it. However, if you've seen my answers in the comments that this isn't just about the ecological and financial impact of upgrading more frequently, it's just so that you might be trying to future-proof a scenario that you may never get to, or you end up getting there, but it becomes a more lucrative return for you because maybe you're a student today, but graduation isn't that far off and you may transition into a professional role and you're not on a ramen budget anymore or your side hustle is finally paying off and you have the means to upgrade into a device which could be just a year or two down the line. And of course, with all the new devices that we'll be talking about right here on YouTube. But my point is that for many of you, I want you to believe that you're not investing in your forever machine. Although some of us have had conversations that you felt as if this would be the last machine you would purchase as it may have been a gift to yourself in retirement or whatever the situation. But my point is just be careful of those diminishing returns because for many of you, the base model offering could allow you to still scale and having additional funding that you can invest back into yourself and your endeavor. And I know that I often incorporate business into the conversations here. You do not have to be in business to think like a business. And so for me, I'm going to stick with the 14 inch form factor for right now. It is serving all the needs that I have and, and then some. What are your thoughts on the situation? Let's hang out in the comments here. Be excellent to each other. Go rock those faces. And I'm always excited to have you right back here on the next one.